Hi guys, it's Brett Williams here from BrettFX.com to run you through a tutorial for the all new Splits 2. Splits 2 is now a set of 44 customizable FX templates used to create split screen layouts. But don't worry, using Splits 2 is still as simple as applying a template to multiple layers in your timeline, choosing position presets, and making custom adjustments. The original Splits was designed primarily with 16x9 media and timelines in mind, but with Splits 2, we also feature four new vertical layouts. Along with support for vertical layouts, Splits 2 brings a ton of great new features, including new vertical and horizontal grid customizers, dial in exactly the number of rows and columns you need to create the grid layout you want, the new pan and zoom effects and animated text overlays are game changers. Rounded corners can add a little modern style. The offset outline option can put a little distance between the border and your image. Adjustable in and out animation speeds, along with five new wipe animations and a rotation option on all animations. Plus custom layout position tweaking and adjustable gaps. All right, so needless to say, I'm very excited about this major update. So without further ado, let's take a look at recreating this 2x2 layout. It'll provide a good overview of how to use the standard and the new features found in Splits 2. So let's start by placing our singer in the timeline first. Okay. Then in your effects browser, which is Command-5 if you don't have it open already, scroll down to BreadFX Splits 2. At the top, you'll see the uh, new customizers for vertical and 16 by nine horizontal and the four new vertical templates we mentioned. And below those are all the 16 by nine templates. And since our project is HD, we're gonna scroll down here to the four screens section and drag the two by two template onto our singer. Now our singer is an HD clip and we're using an HD template or a 16 by nine template. If you wanted to use vertical video in a 16 by nine template, you would need to first compound the clip and then apply the splits effect. We can now close the effects browser as we're going to copy and paste our effect to the other three clips once we've configured this first shot. Next, open up the inspector and you should see all the controls. With Splits 2, there's probably twice as many. If you have the screen real estate, you may want to utilize the full height option of the inspector by double clicking here at the top. We've regrouped some of the controls if you're used to the original splits, but hopefully they're arranged somewhat logically. The first section is now called layout and it's where you'll choose which position your clip resides in. As we drag the slider, it'll jump through the positions in the viewer or you can enter the number directly. We're gonna put the, the singer in position one, the very first top left pane. Next is our first new feature, gap. This controls the space between panes. If we leave it at zero, they'll all touch and fill the screen completely. We're gonna maximize the gap to separate them like in the example. Another new feature is the ability to tweak the position of the pane here in the X position offset and the Y position offset. Previously, you were locked into the position determined by the template, you know, via the position slider. But now if you want to overlap them, slide them off the edge of the screen, whatever you like, it's really up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and reset those though. We're gonna leave them at their defaults. So next let's move down to the animation section where we can choose how to animate our frame in and out. You can now choose from 14 animation choices since we've added five new wipe animations. We're gonna use wipe left for our singer. And below another new feature, the in and out speed controls. We can now adjust the in animation speed or the out animation speed from pretty much instantaneous to two seconds. Let's take a look at that. That's slow. And let's speed it up to almost instantaneous. And this applies to all the different animation choices. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and just use the default, it's fine. 
And down here, another new feature, the in rotation and out rotation. For any of these animate in or animate out uh, choices, you can now add a rotation, which probably looks a little silly on a white, but we'll just take a look. So let's put that back to zero. Okay, so with our position, our gap, and our in animation set, let's move down here to the shape controls. Let's add some roundness to the corners, another new feature in Splits uh, 2. I think, uh, let's put it at 15. Beyond that, if we wanted to, we could also scale our shape, adjust the rotation, the aspect, or the shear. In some of the more complicated templates, these features may not be available because they're locked to the position control of the template itself, especially in mosaic or masonry layouts where the aspect or the scale may be different from pane to pane. So we don't really need to adjust scale, rotation, aspect, or shear, but we do want to use a border. Here we can enable the standard inner border found in the original splits, or we can use the new offset outline. The offset outline feature places it around the image, and with the offset slider, we can put some distance between it and our frame. Or we can go the other way around and inset our outline over the frame itself. Let's set the offset to about 45, and we'll leave the color white for now. We could go ahead and change the color, but that and the following controls are getting pretty specific to this frame itself, and we want each to have a different color. So before we move on, let's plan on copying and pasting this effect to the other three clips that'll be in our layout. I'll make sure our singer is selected, and I'll press Command-C to copy the clip's attributes. Next, I'll drag our guitarist to the timeline and make sure he starts about 12 frames after our singer as we're going to animate the panes in one after the other instead of all at once. And with our guitarist clip selected, we'll press Shift Command V to paste the attributes we just copied from our singer and ensure we're just pasting the splits to effect. Over in the inspector, we'll change his position to pane four, the lower right hand corner. And we will change his animation to wipe right. I want to change his specific border color to red. I'll click the swatch, click on the eyedropper tool, and choose a red from his shirt. I'm going to bring the brightness up a little bit and the saturation. Now we can move on and look at some more clip specific settings. The source controls control what you see inside the shape. We can adjust our source position with this uh, position, size, and rotation settings here. Or even easier, we can use the on-screen controls. Make sure the splits plugin is selected in the browser, and you'll see the on-screen controls in the viewer. I'm just going to tweak his scale and position a little bit. And back in the inspector, we can even choose a tint color and adjust the tint amount. But I'm just going to put that back to zero. Next up are the new pan and zoom controls. If you'd like your image to animate within the frame, Ken Burns style, your clip will really need to be longer than four or five seconds. The panning and zooming occurs in between the in animation and the out animation. And the in and out animation, regardless of speed, occupies the first two seconds of the clip and the last two seconds of the clip. So assuming your clip is long enough, consider that the position and the size adjustments I just made are where the image will start. Now move the playhead to the last couple seconds and adjust the zoom, pan, tilt, and rotate sliders to control where your image will end up. It's really that simple. I think this is a really cool addition. So with that set, let's take a look at a huge new feature and add some animated text. We'll check this box to enable it. And this next box will lock it to the pan and zoom that we just created if we wish. But we'll keep that off this time. We can choose our text in animation here and I'll choose slide left by character. In fact, let me go to the beginning of our clip so we can see what's going on. You can see the text sliding in by character. 
All that text, all the text animation in or out happens within the same two seconds the pane animates in. But you can adjust the delay before it animates in right here. Or in the case of the out animation, advance when it starts with this control. I'm going to enter chunky riffs as my text. Leave it white and change the font style to bold italic. The size looks okay. Let's align it left and to the top. Because we just adjusted the gap, we'll need to tweak the position with these controls here. And maybe a little less line spacing. So let's take a look at that. He wipes on, chunky rifts, slides in, and then we zoom in kind of on his face here. And that looks great. Now, below the text, we see these background controls. If you didn't want to use the source video in the background, uncheck this little box here, or perhaps your source video had some transparency, you'd see the background color that you choose here. I'll go ahead and choose a different color other than black, just to kind of, how about kind of a pink? That's pretty obvious. Or, optionally, you can see a drop zone. Perhaps you shot someone on green screen and they really prefer an outer space background, for example. I'm looking at you, Carl. And these last four controls control the scale and position of the image in the drop zone and the drop zone itself. Let's go ahead and reset that color to black. Set the background to color again. And scroll back up here and turn our source back on. Now, let's repeat this same process for our drums. Add the clip. I've already got it set where it's coming in about 12 frames after the uh, guitarist. Select it. Paste the singer clip attributes that should still be in your pasteboard. Choose the layout position. And this time we'll choose a zoom animation and add some rotation. I'll adjust the source scale and placement with the on-screen controls. Go to the end of the clip, give it some panning, and add some animated red text. How's that look? At this point, you're probably getting the idea. We'll add the last clip, our bass guitar, paste the attributes, adjust its position, add the same zoom and rotate animation, change its outline color, and add some text animation. And let's take a look at that. Back to our first clip, let's change the singer's outline color. And add some animated text. We'll use slide down by character. Now let's take a look at what we've created. So I think this looks good, but it could probably use some out animation. I'll select each clip one by one and choose an out animation. Slide left and right for our singer and guitarist. And overshoot for our bass and drums. And that's it. That's the basics of splits too. The same concepts apply to all the horizontal and vertical templates. 
and to a large extent the customizers and the Splits custom titles. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy Splits 2 as much as I enjoyed making it. And if this video is helpful, please consider subscribing to the BreadFX YouTube channel where we've got an increasing number of Final Cut Pro tutorials as well and BreadFX product tutorials and trailers. Have a great day and happy editing.